Hi, my name is Dr. Jacinda. I'm an agricultural extensionist. Welcome to my channel that takes a glance at the past, present, future, and technical issues in agriculture. Today's topic will look at how to uh, optimize biogas production from a biodigester through proper feeding. Uh, there are two types or two methods of feeding or two types of biodigester feeding. One of them is the initial feeding immediately after the construction of the biodigester. Then there is the maintenance feeding. If these two feedings are done well, a biodigester like the one we discussed last time, that is the fixed dome biogas digester, can give one surface for over 50 years with just that small maintenance. Uh, the initial feeding is rather laborious. It requires a lot of labor. Uh, it requires uh, a lot of the feed material or the substrate that one is going to use for biogas production. Uh, for this purpose, I'll take uh, cow dung as an example. Uh, and if you have constructed a biodigester, that is 12 cubic meters. It means two thirds of that biodigester. That is eight cubic meters. You will be ha you have to be filled with the substrate or the feed material at the initial feeding. This means that because you normally mix, let's say, cow dung with the water at a ratio of one to one, the initial feeding will require four uh, four thousand cubic meters of uh, cow dung. This is equivalent to 4,000 kgs of cow dung. And this is waste, uh, this is material that you require to get from over 250 animals. So for you to, meet, to, to be able to meet this requirement of the initial feeding, it means you have to start something called the stockpiling. Stockpiling means you collect all the waste uh, that is produced from your animals and you keep it somewhere let's say on a, on a clean surface, like, like a clean ground or clean grass, and you cover it well with a polythene paper uh, so that you retain the quality of that uh, material so that it does not dry, it does not lose nitrogen or uh, even some of the biogas. So if you do that, you can cover that material for even as long as one month, uh, and the material will still be very good when you are feeding the digester. Another way of getting this initial high uh, material rate is by you can source it from neighbors. You can also source it from uh, large scale farms that produce a lot of uh, cow dung on a daily basis. So, for example, if you have eight animals, and you have constructed a 12 cubic meter biogas plant, which is ideal for those number of animals. If you stockpile, or if you get this waste at an average of 15 kgs per cow per day, uh, at the end of the month, at the end of that day, you will have accumulated enough cow dung for the purpose of your digester. So um, the digester, as I have said, uh, the important thing is to stockpile. This is the grazing unit. This is the construction of the biogas unit that has started. This is the use point where the gas is going to be used. And you pile this uh, waste as you continue constructing the biogas. You start immediately, you start constructing the biogas, you stop stockpiling unless you have a lot of material that you will need for the first or the initial uh, feeding of the digester. And if you do that well, you cover it well, it will, lose, it will not lose uh, quality, nitrogen will not evaporate, and some, other, uh, some, some of the biogas. And at the time of feeding the digester, this material will be as good as new. And another thing that you have to remember is that feeding, the initial feeding, is laborious. It requires a lot of labor. It means it requires uh, manual labor to correct material from where you have to stockpile it. 
uh, put it in measuring cans or measuring containers, like in this case is buckets, and then take it to the mixing tank, which is near the zero grazing unit, and you mix that one with water, water also available, I want one for powder. So to be able to fit 4,000 kgs into a 12 cubic uh, digester requires that kind of labor. But that is the initial feeding, which is important so that you can be able to get gas as it is uh, required. So the other feeding that you require is the maintenance feeding. This is the feeding uh, from the time of construction to the, to the period that you are going to use the gas, uh, the biodigester, say 50 years uh, or more. You need to feed it uh, uh, continuously so that it can be able to give you gas because you need, it requires fresh material to produce biogas. Now, there are two types of feeding, continuous feeding. One of them is called batch feeding and the other one is called uh, continuous feeding. In batch feeding, it means that you will put the material, let's say the 4,000 cubic meters of uh, waste of cow dung in the biodigester, and you will keep on using the gas until it is over, and then you can put more waste, and you will use it until it's over. That can take you about a month. But no, <clears throat> you need gas supply on a regular basis. If you do this, there comes a time when you might not have gas. Uh, maybe because uh, the waste has uh, the, the material has been uh, used, and now you need to uh, add more material, fresh material. So for you to have a continuous supply when you are having a batch biodigester, you need to either have a storage uh, 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 tank or you can have two or more biodigesters so that when the one is about to be liberated, the other one takes over. So assuming that you have the 12 cubic meter biogas uh, uh, unit that I have talked about, we have to think of something called retention time. Retention time is the period that the waste stays in the biodigester so that all of it is digested and all the gas is removed from that material. For cow dung, uh, the retention time is about 60 days. But it has been shown that 75% of the gas can be removed from the substrate cow dung material uh, within the first 30 days. So if you intend to use a batch, direct, uh, a batch uh, feeding, then it means for 30 days you can use uh, get 75% of the gas and then you need to replenish uh, that by the digester. The other feeding is called continuous feeding. This is a regular feeding of the biogas unit. You can do it daily, twice a day, weekly, uh, by, uh, by weekly, fortnightly, but if you go beyond a fortnight, then it stops being a, a continuous feeding and it becomes more or less a batch feeding. So to feed daily, you need to collect all the material that you require on a daily basis. For example, if, if the pair of cubic meter uh, unit, you require, you, it will produce about four meter cubed of gas per day. That means it is from eight animals, because one animal, I said the daily animal, and produce about 0 0.5 uh, cubic meter of gas. And therefore, you need to collect all the waste from the eight animals and feed it into a biogas unit. If you are not feeding daily and you need to omit one day, or if you are going to feed weekly, all the materials still have to be collected and preserved the way we showed the preservation uh, during the initial feeding. So that when you feed it at that time, then you have all the waste to give you, or the other material to give you biogas. Note that the regularity is very important. If you decide to feed it daily, feed it daily. If you decide weekly, give it weekly, and so on. So the method of feeding will, uh, or the regularity will depend on the time available, labor uh, available, and a lot and all that. So how exactly do you feed a biogas unit? You need to collect clean material. Let's say for cow dung. Collect cow dung that is not mixed with other with feed materials like grass and so on, sad, stones and so on. Clean material. 
put it in the mixing tank or just measure it, how much it is, put it in the mixing tank of the biogas unit, which is adjacent to the digester, and then add an equal volume of water. It's also important for you to be able to get a uh, urine. When a biogas unit is being constructed, normally a small channel that is a drainage from the, bio, uh, from the animal unit uh, is able to receive the urine. Put this urine into the biodigester. It is very important because urine is high in nitrogen, either in form of urea or ammonia. And nitrogen is the building material of the, bio, uh, of the bacteria that are used for biogas production. So if you put urine, your biogas uh, digester is likely to produce more gas than the one which is not putting urine because there is high multiplication of the bacteria because the bacteria are built of protein material and which comes from nitrogen and the urine provides that. Then mix the water and mix the water and the material or the substrate or the cow dung in this case uh, properly and then open the inlet of the digester which is at the base of the mixing tank and let that material go into the tank. After that make sure that you clean the mixing tank so that there is no dirt left there and then you cover that in red so that you don't have things like storm water or rain water or any other water getting into the biodigester because it will affect the concentration of the materials there and hence the biogas production. So um, if you this is how uh, azure grazing and the adjacent structures look like. This is part of the zero grazing unit. This is the correction channel to the urine receptor, and this is the mixing tank. Uh, you will find that the mixing tank, this is the base of the mixing tank. The inlet is uh, slightly raised. The purpose of this one is that when you mix the materials, heavy materials like the stones and grit and sand, we will see here, so that once you have finished uh, putting the material into the digester, you can remove this sad and heavy materials. If you don't remove these heavy materials, they will be able to accumulate with the time and they will get into the digester. And when the digester is full or has a lot of this content, these materials don't produce biogas. So your bio digester will be producing less gas than you expect, simply because it there is accumulation of materials that don't produce biogas. So this one is the cover to the, this, this is the inlet, this is a mixing tank, and it is important that this structure is covered so that no storm water gets in to the digester through that place. So uh, this one brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for watching. And this one, after this one, we are going to take a, a short break on the biogas uh, presentations so that we look at something else, but we will continue thereafter. So if you have liked this presentation, uh, kindly give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that uh, there you get a on upcoming issues. Uh, thank you very much and let's meet in the next presentation. Thank you.